Y'all know what time it is. It is time for story time. Get on in here because we got some things that I want to talk about. Woo, woo, woo. So I haven't been live in a while. Um, I've been, you know, doing my little projects and things like that, but I haven't been live in a while. So I'm really, really excited to be here with you all today. Uh, this also will be posted on my YouTube channel. So, you know, let's go, let's go, let's go. Anyway, what's going on, everybody? It's your boy, JJ, also known as your gay best friend, and we're here with a story time. So, I wanted to give you guys a very detailed story time, because a lot of the times I get all mixed up and shit like that. So, I want to start from the beginning, okay? Are you ready? Are you ready? Okay, let's go. So, I was working at One World Trade Center doing security. This started back, I would say, 2017 or 18. And then, um, <laughs> I definitely, uh, you know, I'm always myself. I'm Anywhere I go, I'm going to be myself. That's one period. Like, I'm not going to allow others to influence me. I've always been myself. So, long story short, I had gotten really close with some of the workers there or whatever. It wasn't my intention, but, you know, when you got people all in your face or whatever, wanting to be friendly, et cetera, et cetera, you know, I just, I'm just myself. So, I'm open and I'm accepting of it, right? So long story short, I was working there. I think I was one of the only gay, um, and I'm not going to say the only gay, but I was definitely the only open, expressive one um, at my job. So long story short, I would always get compared to this one dude that used to work there. Chris, right? His name is Chris. Uh, he would always, I would always get compared to him. And I'm like, okay, well, who is this dude or whatever the case may be? Because... I don't like to get compared to other people. I am my own self. So when I finally figure out who he is, I'm like, y'all comparing me to this dusty ass bitch because there's no comparison. The only thing that you can compare is the gayness. But when it comes to the swag and when it comes to the tongue, you can't compare. So long story short, um, he was friends, still friends with the people that still work there. Okay. So we go out. I get invited out. Now, everybody was like, don't go out with them. Everybody was like, do not do it to yourself. But I did. So we're out. We're having margaritas. We're on uh, Christopher Street, West 4th. We're having margaritas. Chris is there. Now, Chris is not the most attractive dude. I clearly am. Not to toot ooh, my own horn. But Chris is not like the, the most attractive dude. Let me just give you a picture. He's very dark skin. Um, he wears glasses. Um... He's never moisturized, so it's always crossed around his lips. Whatever the cat. Whatever. Let's just get into the story. So, as we're drinking, I got lit. I got lit. The, the bartender was making some really good drinks. So, we're all the dance floor and we're dancing or whatever. And I got dared to kiss him. It was like a dare. So, I did it. Like, I'm wild and I'm open. And I'm like, I had no attraction to him, so I had no worries. <laughs> so, when... That same moment, he's kissing me and doing all of that. I guess he had, like, posted a boomerang on Instagram, and I was there. And his boyfriend at the time, who was also my co-worker, but at that moment, I didn't know. So, his co-worker is, like, sending him messages, like, being all spicy. And he's showing me the messages, just being mad messy. So, I'm like, at this point, I'm drunk. So, I'm like, what that bitch talking about? I ain't nobody worried about her. I don't even know who this is. I, this person is a coworker of mine, but mind you, I work in one more trade center, so the building is very big. So you're not always going to see your coworkers, or you're not always going to know who is your coworker. So, long story short, I finally figure out who this nigga is, Jamie. So, as I'm on the 90th floor, I think I was on the 93rd or the 90th floor. He came to relieve me because I had to go downstairs to speak with supervisors. They were calling me. So I went down, he came up. I didn't I didn't change with him because they told me don't worry about it, just go down because he's on his way up. So I went down, mind you, I still don't know who this boy is. I just know a name. His name is Jamie. That's all I know is his name. So when I come when I come back to the 93rd floor, I see him. Some little dude. Nothing. No candle to me. So when I get there, I'm like, oh, are you the relief for the 93rd floor? And his response was, yes. And I said, okay, I just wanted to let you know that I'm back. Those were the literal words that I said. I didn't make nothing up. I, those were the words that I said. Why does it get back to Chris, according to Jamie, that I was being disrespectful to his boyfriend? Now, I wasn't being disrespectful. 
Are you upset that I was at? Oh, hey, how you doing? I think it, you were more upset that I didn't like uh, gravel over you. But we're at work. I asked you, were you the relief? You said yes. And I said, oh, I just wanted to let you know that I'm back. Thank you. But that's disrespectful. So long story short, they're throwing a party. It's Pride Weekend. And apparently I wasn't invited to the party because I was disrespectful to his boyfriend. So what's the next best thing to do? Crash it. I'll tell you, I was wild back in the day. But this was like three years ago, so it wasn't even that long ago. I'll say four now. So I'm in the party or whatever. I go looking good as fuck, okay? I'm coming to debut with the blonde hair because... I've been blonde for like four years straight now, but before that I wasn't. So I'm coming in, oh, new look, looking good as fuck or whatever. So I had to work the next morning, so I didn't stay very long. But my best friend, Shaquana, she stayed. And the first thing I, a message, I get a message as soon as I leave the party. They're both arguing over me. Jamie's like, oh, because it's so funny because, you know, he said that I was being disrespectful and all that. But when I first walked into the party from the rip, it was... Oh, hi. How you doing? Welcome. You want a plate? You want me to make you something to eat? But this is a bitch that was just like, oh, so I'm like, nah, I'm good. Like, you know, I'm good. You know, I brought my own bottle. I don't need nothing from y'all. Nothing from you guys. I'm just here to make people uncomfortable because that's the type of bitch that I am. So <laughs> I leave the party. My best friend Shaquan is like, yo, they over here fighting with about you. Jamie's telling Chris, oh, why you don't go with Jay? Why you don't go with Jay? Because he can't, okay? So y'all can go ahead and argue about me, fine, or whatever. I haven't seen Chris in years. So yesterday, last night, was a friend of ours, Jamila, her birthday. So she invited us all to a brunch. Now, Jamila's a real one because she gave me the tea on who was going to be there, who was not going to be there. And clearly, I don't have an issue because I'm able to be cordial all the time. I'm able to be very cordial. I know how to keep it cute. So... <laughs> we everybody gets there everybody arrives now I saw Gio and Chris on my peripheral but I decided not to say anything right you see me too you don't you don't approach me or whatever whatever so I guess they go off to the bar to have drinks or whatever while I'm waiting at the restaurant so we finally all get to the restaurant I see Gio Gio's like my birthday twin I don't really have shade or like a beef with Gio is no there's like you know a lot of that was like a lot of influences or whatever and Gio likes to run his mouth and in the ear but if you can't say it with your chest I'm not that's not something that I worry about so I'm able to kind of like just pass that off we're at the dinner so we're all you know giving each other hugs or whatever whatever so Chris decides to come and open his arms to me and it wasn't me being shady, but I'm just at that moment in my life where I don't need to be, embrace people if I know, like, you're not 100% for me. So instead of hugging him, I extended my arm to shake his hand. You see, initially, as soon as I did that, initially, he was like, oh, well, bitch, like, you mad I didn't hug you? I shook your hand. I ain't even have to do that. But because you didn't like the way that I greeted you because I didn't fucking hug you. Like, what? What? Okay, whatever. So, we go upstairs, we're all sitting at the table, we're all having a good old time. I'm all the way on the other side of the table. There, it's a party of ten. So, I'm all the way at one end, and they're literally all the way at the other end. The waiter, so, oh, okay, let's rewind. Because, child, you see, I be forgetting stuff. There was a birthday party. This is after Pride. There was a birthday party for one of the co-workers. I went. I was the only one there. They've known each other for a very long time. So when the waiter was trying to take a group photo or whatever, the, the waiter told me, like, hey, squeeze in a little bit. And then this bitch across the table, oh, don't worry about that, bitch. Of course you don't want me in the picture, hoe, because I'll outshine you any motherfucking day. So at that moment, I'm like, yo, watch your fucking mouth. But I don't want to fucking shake the table because this is a birthday celebration. And I don't want to be that one to be, you know, but nobody defended me. Nobody stuck up for me. Nobody told him to shut the fuck up. You understand what I'm saying? Not that I need that because my mouth is big enough to defend myself. So after that situation at that party, he's taking at this party last night, he's taking a group photo. So mind you, I already got PTSD from that first party that we went to with the group photo so I'm not even trying to pose for it 
Now the waiter comes and he's taking pictures. So now I'm posing for the pictures, right? I don't even know whose phone it is. So the waiter, I'm the closest to the end where they were taking the pictures. So the waiter starts flipping through the phone and showing me the pictures. So I'm like, oh yeah, they came out nice or whatever. Out of nowhere, this bitch, this raggedy bitch comes and snatches the phone from my hand with so much fucking feeling. With so much feeling. So my initial response, like, you raggedy bitch, snatch something from me one more fucking time. Because there was no need for it. There was no need for it. So when I had did my little outburst, we are right by the DJ. So I'm not thinking that a lot of people heard me, but clearly the whole table heard me. So I'm across from my friend Shaniqua, and I'm like, Shaniqua, she's like, Jay, just chill. And I looked at her, and I said, well, what would you do? She said, there's a time and a place. So I said, you telling me to meet him outside? Because I was ready to fuck shit up. Can you imagine being always disrespected and always having to be the bigger person because of time and place? So I kept it cute. So we're having a good old time. At this point, I don't forgot about the nigga. We having a good time in our little section. We about to get ready to leave. So we're all paying the bill. He stands up and mouths across the room. Fuck you. To me. So I looked at I looked at Shaniqua and I said, yo, he's really trying me. Apparently, a lot of people saw it, but nobody voiced anything about it. So, he said, fuck me. And I was like, no, fuck you, bitch. What's up? You raggedy bitch. You, with your struggle braids. That's not even all your hair. You have fucking weave in your hair to braid it. And it looks crusty. You came to dinner wearing what the fuck you were wearing. Not getting the memo that it said to dress nice. That's what you call dressing nice. Bitch, you could never... So long story short, I'm at the table. We having a good old time. Again, I done forgotten about him. And I get a call. Shanique, which is at the bar. She's like asking me what I want as a shot. So I get up and I go to the bar. So they're all saying bye to each other or whatever the case may be. And I was like, oh, so what was you saying, bitch? What's up? Because you had a lot of motherfuckers say across from the table. What's up? This nigga started running down the motherfucking stairs. I said, yeah, you know better. Because I'll fucking hurt you out here tonight and I will get away with it so it's just like why the, uh, why is it always the ugly bitches that try me I'm gonna try to look for a photo for you hold on we're gonna look for a photo crusty fucking bitch I'm tired of being tried I'm very tired of being tried because the fact that I can't coexist with a bunch of other gay people because there's some you know animosity or jealousy or whatever the case may be I, I can't take it and a lot of people a lot of people theories especially in that table was oh you kissed him so he's mad because he wants more I mean because it was never about that it was a fucking dare like and his mouth wasn't the best smelling so I definitely didn't kiss him again but it's just the fact is like yo why you have to be a messy hoe you come to dinner you look the way you look and then you have the audacity to try to... You can't be ugly and shady, ho. It doesn't work. So, that's the story time for today. I know the area that he lives in. Don't ever let me catch you slipping, ho. Because last night, you got away because you ran. And I'm not chasing no bitch. You don't want to fight, I'm not going to chase you. But... Keep in mind, when you run your motherfucking mouth, you could get whopped just like Candace did by Miss Monique. Anyway, I hope everybody has an amazing day. If you like this content, make sure you like and subscribe to the channel. Please post a comment on what things you want to see here on out. And at the end of the day, keep it motherfucking cute. Till next time, bye. <laughs>